The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantinus and between them, the guests joining me here today to deep dive into Finito have been on Channel 7's The Project, worked in a German beverage company, appeared on Talkback Radio and are a Monash Business School mentor, underachievers, the two of them. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Deborjan Rosaya and Matt Boyd. Woo! Hey, Lisa. Awesome to see you, Peter. We sound more impressive than we actually are, I think. <laughs> well, that's what we've got to do, right? It's all about the public perception. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Now, I feel like I just want to spend a whole lot of time chatting about all those other things, but we've got to dive into this tech. Before we do, let's just get to know the two of you better through your use of technology. Now, let's start with Matt. Up, you up first. You're on the left on my screen. What's your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I do, yeah, mm. shamefully. My most used emoji is the smiley face with the hearts around it. Nice. Because I've got a three-year-old daughter that just melts my heart on data basis, so I use that a lot. <laughs> Lovely. Probably in response to photos and all sorts of things when when shared and, and look, she's doing this, can you believe it, sort of photos, right? Yeah, no, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, she's very cute. Yeah, my, I get all of those for my niece as well. And they're just – sometimes it's too hard to describe the response and so I'm with you. I use that emoji a lot too. How about you, Deportion? What's your most used emoji? Um, the one that I end up using the most is the fist bump. Nice. First time on the show, I think. I don't think that's come up before. So, nice. Oh, Look cool. at you being individual. Fantastic. And staying with you then, if you had to wipe everything off your smartphone and, you know, don't go into apoplectic shock at that thought, but if you did, which three apps would you keep if you could only keep three? This is going to be sound really boring, but I need my phone to call people, so I'd keep nice. the phone out. Nice. I would keep my calendar because I need to know where I'm going. Yeah. Got on. And maybe this is a reflection of being in Melbourne, but I need to know the weather. Oh, good call. Yeah. I can change that's a very time. good call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's an appropriately Gen X response, I say, as someone firmly in that category too. So I very think. Very <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. How about you, Matt? What would be the three you'd keep? Uh, so I've got two boring ones and one slightly more fun one. So it would be the, the Gmail app, uh, nice. yeah. the, the Chrome app, just because that's my preferred web browser, but uh, Spotify as well. So I'm constantly listening to you, podcast, music, and, uh, and so on. So, yeah, Spotify's got to be in there. Nice. I'm the same. In fact, my all of the things that connect to my phone now automatically just start Spotify when I wander through them, including my car, um, which can be a rude shock depending on the last thing you've listened to on your phone. Exactly, exactly. All right. So let's do- dive into Finito, shall we? So look, normally I start with, hey, what category of advice tech do you guys fall under? 
that doesn't quite apply here because for starters, this isn't tech for advisors as much as it's tech to lead into conversations about financial advice or at least finance topics. So why don't you, why don't instead we start with, you know, what's the primary problem Finito's trying to solve? You know, where did this all start? That's a great question, Peter. So we all know, and, and we've got a lot of smart advice sitting in here, so we all know that one of the biggest challenges we have as an industry, you know, we're in this to help people, and one of the biggest challenges is getting financial help to more people. Mm. It's not enough of us. We're produced in numbers. It's become more expensive and more complicated to give advice. Um, and so there's this, you know, this conversation that's been happening for years now around the accessibility and the affordability of advice. Yeah. There's lots of solutions that are out there for that. But um, where Finito started was when we were looking at these solutions, they're all product-focused, mm. so whether it's robo-advice, whether it's super funds, whether it's, you know, lending. It, it, there's so many fantastic product solutions out there. However, when we talk to advisors and um, you do more of this than, than any of us is um, we're in this to help people. And, and a lot of the conversations we have with our clients and with people that are by our clients are not financial product-related. And so... To, to cut to the chase, Benito has been built, it's taken three and a half years, but <laughs> been built to help advisors or to help consumers have conversations about money yep. with people that may not in that, that don't involve any financial product. Yeah. A lot of the coaching type conversations, and that's ultimately what we're trying to solve and bring to the 80% of Australians that just start get access to someone to help them with money issues. And it's an interesting concept, isn't it? Because I think what we probably haven't really acknowledged as an industry is, you know, for years we've been in the game of training marathon runners rather than helping somebody touch their toes. Do you know what I mean? Like I think we've sort of been at this end where they've already almost got to be a bit in shape and they've got to have a bit of money. Like, like there's these all these requirements to qualify um, to either be able to afford or to the type of advice financial advice has been, whereas um, we weren't necessarily designing things that would help somebody just get up off the couch. Do you know what I mean? That and you know, as somebody who's super unfit, then it, it's a it's a stark difference the way you engage with things, right? And and you know, when I look at um, some of the stuff on Instagram that's targeted at that I- extreme sports stuff, I mean, I run screaming, right? <laughs> So, uh, you know, probably the consumer is much the same is they look at this complex advice stuff and just go, whoa, 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 whoa. That feels like it's a bit intense. Um, no. You know, I need help. I need guidance. I need, you know, assistance, um, coaching. Uh, I don't know that I need to run a marathon just yet. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, we're as advisors and then all, all the advisors listening are, are great advice, technical gurus and really good at helping people achieve things that are important to them. So but but we're the Olympic coaches. Yeah. And what um what is not available to most people is just the person who says, Hey, just remember, um, you need to sleep a bit more, eat better, do a little bit of exercise, this is what it might look like, or there's some tips and these behaviors. Yeah. And they're, they're, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and I guess, you know, it's a bit like people, some people have managed to find that on, say, Instagram, they'll find a follower, somebody, sorry, somebody, you know, an influencer that they can follow on, on Instagram. But what they're not getting is necessarily, um, A, you know, getting any sense of where that person sits in terms of experience or training or anything like that in terms of the background of those people, but also, you know, collecting them together. You know, I think it's interesting to have for Nito and you use this word before, before we hit record was, you know, a marketplace where somebody could find the right human that talks the way they need them to talk about money. That's really interesting. Letting them do that sort of try them out a bit, you know, and check out their content and like all in one place. That's an interesting sort of concept. Um, that's quite different, I think, to the way people would have sourced, you know, those insights previously. Yeah, for sure. I think I think people just what we're talking about here is people just getting on the journey, uh, guiding people. We, we've um, we've launched our 
uh, first release, our MVP of the tech, uh, but we are already, uh, we've already we already got a, a list of new tech features and functionality as long as our arm. <laughs> um, and part of that is uh, evolving the, the user journey and helping people regardless of their position in life, uh, whether they're a um, couple in their sort of 30s, early 40s with a young family, approaching retirement, wherever they might be, um, we, we're helping to guide them through that journey and uh, combat the big problems uh, and the reasons why people don't typically go to the industry, which is they're confused by it, they're overwhelmed, they think it's going to be too expensive, they don't necessarily trust the industry. So we, we're, we're working to combat uh, those issues and, and help people on the journey and at the end of the day get more people improving their financial literacy, making better decisions, and ultimately being able to, to build their savings, uh, live the sort of life that, that, that they want to, a more, a more comfortable life. And it is an interesting point, I think, that that has probably completely passed really any of the major institutions in our space, is that no matter how much they have like the most gorgeous brand and they have some fantastic ads and they're funny or they're engaging all this they nobody follows that nobody connects with that nobody runs up to a person from a big bank hi i can't believe i love your podcast like no. <laughs> there's not that human connection and i think that's why it's always been hard for financial services to connect with the public. I think this is an opportunity for the public to realise that advice or this sort of space is human to human, you know, and it's it's getting help from other human beings who who truly understand where they're at. Um, and it's just about finding the one that vibes for you, like that you really get what they're doing and, and it works, you know, and the, there's an eclectic, you know, range of, of advisors and sort of experts that you guys have in the marketplace. And that's really important, right? I mean, the lovely James and I, who are both hosts on the Ensemble podcast, are two very different advisors and very different coaches and content creators. But, you know, we're both on this space and it's a way for somebody to go, oh, yeah, Peter, she's weird. I don't know what all that adventure rubbish is about. But James, I like that. I like that serious young insect thing that James has got going on. You know, he's really into the detail and the like they can find that person that resonates for them. Absolutely. Um, and it is it is about the the, the people. It's about the humans. So the, you more so than most others, uh, Pizza would uh, continue to talk about AI and it, it comes up in everyday conversation. The, the technology that we built, uh, it will allow us to reach uh, a large audience. So we're already engaging thousands of people, uh, thousands of everyday Aussies through this platform and we'll continue to, to grow and grow day by day, week by week. The technology allows us to do that. It allows us to streamline processes uh, but at the end of the day, it's about the community uh, and it's about that human connection and that that one-on-one appointment, whether um, somebody chooses to just have one appointment and they get those burning questions answered or they are appointments that are more ongoing, that are more frequent. It, it's up to them. They have the power to decide that, but it is about that that connection. With somebody else um, through the platform that, that sort of, builds that trust for the individual that that's integral to finito you know we we always want to do the right thing trust is absolutely paramount uh, and mm. so they will continue to come to our platform and and book appointments and consume the the, the thousands of articles uh podcasts videos and so on that we have within our hub yeah that, that i mean that word trust is so important right and then mm. uh, that as you said being a back that we don't trust them generally. Yeah, that's just you know as a society. Um, and but the other thing you mentioned is Instagram. And again, to the advisors, shout out on who are listening. We worry constantly about what our clients and what our communities watch and see and read. And there's some fantastic content out there, but there is absolute rubbish, and there is stuff that gets sold, you know, to people that just takes advantage of people. Mm. sell stuff and so one of the mattresses we've got in Tanega was that it's got to be trust based and you know it's a trusted place where people can come from experts like you and James as a couple of our creatives who can share um, information for the audience that we trust from people that we trust you know and yeah and, yeah. and we'll not allow anyone to have a 
something that is not actually good for the consumer. And that's what the consumers need, especially those that don't have a relationship with a trusted advisor. Um, and that's again, that's eighty percent of, of, of consumers just simply can't get that for whatever reason. Either there's not enough of us, or they can't afford it, or the the way that not that advice relationship works means that it is you know it has a cost associated with it as well. So we're trying to bring bring the things that we provide at a higher level and a more detailed, more personalised level, you know, to more people in an easier to access way. And so in so terms, terms of that, coming at it from, you know, there's an advisor out there like, oh, I love producing content. I like the idea of, of reaching more people and having more of an impact well before advice. Then, you know, what's one of the important, you know, things they've got to get their head around? And one of the things, you know, I've thought through is the the line between coaching and and legislated advice, you know, and really thinking through what is the difference and, and what can you guide people on or provide guidance in that type of call you're talking about versus, you know, personal advice. What are the, some of the things that you you would recommend people either think through or prepare if they're considering, um, you know, reaching out and taking part in, in something like Finito? Yeah, so we, we've spent a lot of time and money with lawyers, clients, the, the, the experts that know their way around the legislative framework. Mm. And that's really helped us because I think being in the industry, again, as an advisor, we have a certain perception of compliance and it's all risk-driven and, you know, the licensing regime has driven that. And we are fearful of doing the wrong thing, right? Um, what we've been able to do is clarify having people not from the industry in the business like Matt and others advisory right board um, of Finito has really helped to remove that advisor hat that I wear because I come from that compliant, scared, oh, I've got to be careful. Defensive, so, yeah. yeah um, to, to actually get clear on what we, you know, what we can and can't say, which there are those things. But ultimately it came down to you know, a very simple way to think about it is the conversation is that if you wouldn't say it at a barbecue to a friend, then, you know, you probably shouldn't be talking to anyone about it unless you do it. that good advice, right? Yeah. Uh, where that, to, to make that more technically oriented for us advisors, um, if you're talking about a product or telling someone what to do with a product or a class of product, then you're crossing the line. Mm-hmm. We can use examples, we can use case studies, we can educate people, we can teach people what a non concessional super contribution is. Yeah. yeah. We can we can do all of those things. And it's not personal advice and it's definitely not general advice, it's information. Um and so we've spent a lot of time uh creating material and providing a framework so that um advisors or coaches who are on the platform know what that where that line is. And consumers are also very clearly told you are not going to get product advice on the platform. If you want that, you should really go to an advice because there's some advice out there, right? Um, yeah. But if you just want a little bit of learning, a bit of literacy, a bit of guidance, a bit of coaching, a bit of just a chat about something like how often do we have a chat to someone and they're like, oh, you know, that was an amazing conversation. It just helped me clear up what's in my head. Right. That coach. Um, then that's that's where there's a lot of power in what the NIO can do. And because it's being done outside of an advice firm, again, it makes it much clearer for the consumer that they're not getting advice. Yeah. And there is an interesting, um, you know, it's, there's there's so much to be said for either clarity, so helping, oh, look, we're, we're at this point and, and I feel like we're behind, in all, 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 you know, and really you're a, like you're like a mirror to them. You're just giving clarity on what, so I'm hearing what you say, said was and, and, okay, hold on, have you thought of, make sure you consider, like there's all sorts of things that a coach does that, I mean, a good coach never gives you the answer. Yeah. Right? That's just, I mean, that's the coaching 101. <laughs> You never give them the answer. You guide them to discovering the answer themselves. And so, you know, I think that clarity is important. But I think also we can't underrate inspiration and confidence. I think, you know, it actually takes a fair bit of confidence to go and see a technical expert in anything, you know, and it doesn't really matter what it is. It could be an architect. It could be a lawyer. Like anybody who's a deep technical expert, it takes a bit of confidence to get there. You want to feel like you're you're well-armed. And I think this is the type of, you know, 
collective um, and, you know, community and platform that can help give people that confidence. It's like, oh, okay, I sort of get where I'm at. I've chatted to somebody. They give me a bit of guidance. Now I know I'm going to go over here and get that expert help. You know, Yeah, I, I think we underestimate how hard it is for our clients to come and talk to us. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, I mean, you've really got to build up the nerve. I mean, it's like walking into the gym for the first time for a long time, right? All these things are very exposing um, and really do knock you around. And so I think a place that can make you feel like everybody else is there looking and, and is, is learning just like me, you know, there's power in that. Um, real power. And so I'm curious then, so clearly, um, you know, the marketplace is made up of two clear sides then. There's the the coaches, the content creators um, who are on there. Then there's, of course, the consumer. So where are they coming from? How are you building out the consumers that sort of take part in the marketplace? Yeah, we've got a combination of um, channels at the moment. So my my background is marketing. is what I studied in England, practiced for the best part of 10 years. I did everything in marketing from that. Uh, uh, running multi-million dollar above the line campaigns to run it onto the MCG uh, pre-game to run an activation in front of the twenty odd thousand people that were already <laughs> in their seats, which was absolutely terrifying. But yeah, uh, and a great steep learning uh, experience in public speaking. I tell you, um, but I uh, I sort of got out of love with marketing, and I don't practice it specifically anymore. I've been in the startup space since. 2016 and where the sort of operations have it infinito but um have that experience and we we work with some uh, great agencies uh, and contractors at the moment and we we're still in our infancy to be quite honest with with our, our marks and our outreach but regardless we we're very pleased uh, with our early adopters as i said thousands of um, seekers of financial guidance, um, part of our community. Um, we've had great response from financial professionals. I mean, we've, we've had a few hundred that have uh, signed up and also pre-registered for um, Finito Connect, which which is going live now. Um, we've launched the content hub, Finito Hub went live a few months ago. Finito Connect is now going live, which is very exciting. Uh, but it's a combination, really. It's it's our own channels um, uh, across you know all the all the usual social media platforms. Yep. Um, but as as well as that, uh, advertising, uh, digital advertising in, in various forms. Uh, we spend a bit of time uh, with SEO. Um, the SEO is interesting because the key words that we would typically be wanting people to discover the needs are with when they're when they're on Google uh, are very expensive and very competitive because yeah. often the big banks are competing for them as well. So um, we did need to get a bit creative there, but still we, we're pretty strong from an SEO perspective. And um, and now we're just we're just broadening out into new uh, online advertising campaigns. Um, as well as partnerships uh, are looking to be uh, a really strong opportunity for us. Uh, we're starting to partner with a range of organisations, uh, sporting organisations, uh, large businesses within the financial services sector, um, and, uh, yeah, just, just growing uh, week by week, month by month around the uh, the different marketing channels that, that we can sort of go out and reach more people. It's, it's interesting we have... A huge total addressable market, uh, 80 to 90% of uh, Aussies that need more support with their financial futures. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, we've got very clear on our personas and uh, different campaigns will engage different people in different ways. Uh, and so that that um, that mother or dad with a young family, you'd engage in a completely different way to somebody in their 20s who just thinks... Uh, Sexy words like cryptocurrency and investment portfolios is all they need to be thinking about. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we're clear on uh, who we believe are our core target audiences. I think it's very important as a business. And one of the worst things you can say to certain stakeholders with a business are just when they ask, oh, who's your type of audience? Oh, we're for everyone. That's <laughs> just terrible and, and very naive. But we're very clear on our primary, secondary, even tertiary type of audiences. And, uh, yeah, we we got we got very ambitious targets. We we want to hit a, a significant segment uh, of the Australian market and yeah, support a lot of people on their financial journeys. It's an interesting thought, actually. I mean, historically, you know, for advisors to connect with groups 
say, the groups of, of people, generally it was via employer super, like that was something that historically was a, a match and advisor would be attached to this employer super offering and it was all of the, you know, employees that were within that. And what's when you step back from that, like it always just seems so nat, like this is perfect, you know, and they've all got super and they're contributing to it and then we can come out and we can educate. And But what's interesting about it is, Generally, for most people, super is the last thing they're interested. Like in their financial world, <laughs> super is the last thing they're interested in. And so here we are as advisors attaching ourselves to the least interesting thing in their financial world what or thing? even the least worrying thing. And so I think to shift from that, and yes, it might be you know groups via an employer or like you say, sporting club or whatever it, it might be, but it's just like this is about your financial well-being you know, wherever you are in that journey, this isn't about this, like we said before, product and it's it's coming off that. I think it's a really important lens and a shift that's necessary because the minute it's attached to product, it's about us. And, you know, what we really need it to be is about them. Uh, and it's so important. Absolutely. And we were talking about that just before this podcast in a, in a session we were having. It's not about what we what next for the business and it really is about what the market wants and so we are constantly user testing uh through the journey uh and looking to deliver for Aussies uh what they need uh on this journey what what's most important to them so uh yeah it's it's so integral to us uh as an organization and I could I think you're completely right Peter it is about what they need uh, you know, understanding um, what they do currently have and, and where they want to get to and, and what's what's needed along that journey. And yeah. we are looking to provide that uh, with a combination of our, our tank and, and uh, our community that's uh, you know, quickly grown a lot for me. So. And it's an interesting, what I love about this sort of um, approach or lens when you're forced to go through this is, is, you know, you ask better questions and you can add value really quickly. So there might be a whole cohort of people who need help, you know, negotiating rent or or how do you compete well when you're going for a new rental property or how do you like, now, is that financial advice? No, but does it have to do with their money? Well, yeah. <laughs> And for some people, a significant chunk of their money right now. So, you know, finding, learning a way to find the challenges they're facing, like what's immediately in front of them instead of, you know, harping on about these other big picture things, let's just solve the problem right in front of them now. Let's just help them out with that, you know, and once you've given them that guidance, you know, it can lead to other things for sure. Yeah, and we're, we're, you know, we're working on uh, a lot of exciting new updates, a, uh, a financial concierge, um, that, that starting point, um, or any just sort of runs into our journey. We, we've got a lot of, there's a lot of different avenues through our platform. There's a lot of different things that people can do, ingress uh, spaces and topics that they can consume with the Obsidian Table Hub. And so, yeah, we're just very mindful of that and helping people along and uh, yeah, mapping out those two use journeys based on. Uh, whatever walk of life somebody's coming from is is uh, something we're spending a lot of time on. Mm. And well, we're learning from you know from the consumer, but also from our advice and coaches. You know, things like uh, conversation: how, how to have a conversation with my partner about money issues, or my right. kids: how to talk to my kids about money. Yep. Now, these are things that parents are thinking about. These right. are things that you know people are thinking about in terms of you know how do I talk about money to my partner? So uh, it doesn't have to need an investment portfolio or a superannuation account or an insurance policy uh, to add value. We all know that as advisors, but we somehow end up um, in that direction and, you know, maybe it's it's like that traditional model that we're in. Well, and I think there's, um, you know, we've all spent a lot of time and energy on the education to get to the point where we can do all those things um, and do the investing, you know, all all the complexity and all the analysis. But you know, in terms of changing lives, most of us, whatever impact we've had of somebody that's really made a, a massive impact on lives, it'll be like, you know, you've been in hospital and there's that magical nurse that just gets you, sees what you need, helps you out, supports you. Like it's it's this connection that's at a much more personal level and that's about immediate need. You know, it's guidance, it's care, it's all those things. And I think, you know, the you compare that actually, the medical situation is a great example. You know, surgeons... <laughs> Um, they technically want, I mean, hugely proficient, you know, high skill, but they don't connect with the public. 
you know, and so, you know, which, which do we want, which do we need more of right now in our industry? And I think, you know, we probably need a few less surgeons and a few more really good um, general practitioners and, and nurses to connect um, and to just help people in the day to day, you know, manage the pain they're dealing with. Um, so talk to me about then for the, for the content creators, then, you know, I'm betting a bit like, um, say Netflix, where Netflix, you know, sources other content, but also has its own produced shows and, and movies, your content creators are most of them bringing content they've had elsewhere, or they're doing new stuff for the platform. Is it a mix of both? Yeah, it's it's a mix of both. Um, and we, we were realistic from the start, like we, we naturally want to uh, grow native content. Uh, we want people to spend lots of time on the platform. We're very pleased in these early stages that our, our, our early adopter seekers of financial guidance, the, the session times are long, the bounce rates are low. So those metrics are, are really positive. Uh, but as our creators started to come on board, it was, uh, there was a bit of a backlog there. Um, so I had been producing content for many years. So we wanted to get as much of that content up as possible. Uh, but very quickly, we've started to see native content being posted, and we're we're working with them uh, to to develop ideas. Sometimes a quick thirty minute brainstorming session can give life to um, a new weekly series. Like yeah. uh, we've got Lexi and Gemma running Frankly Finance every Friday morning, uh, and they're just doing a fantastic job. And that consistency, we're we're, we're so appreciative of because we we are new at market, and they really took the ball, ball by the horns yeah. and and uh, committed and continue to commit on a weekly basis of their. Their audience is growing, and and we love that. We've uh, yeah. run a session with you, Peter, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, we've we've had some had some great people uh, on board so far, and we want more of that. So, to you, financial professionals out there, whether you are an existing content creator or it's something you've been thinking about for a while, we are absolute platform for that. Um, we create a dedicated space for our creators uh, where they can uh, feed their content in, they can uh, host their weekly shows within our events hub. We'll work with people very closely. That's all very high touch. So we've got a community manager, Kimberly, who supports us there to continue to bring new shows to life and um, beyond the, the content hub, beyond the live shows. We've got some really exciting features that are going to be going live at the coming months. We're going to be creating the ability for masterclasses to be hosted on Finito Hub, workshops, uh, live discussion groups, and this can very much involve financial professionals, but we want that sort of peer-to-peer support as well. We want people to to jump in and uh, and just post questions and then maybe answered by a fellow seeker of finance yeah. guidance. Oh, I had that problem last year and I found that this was really useful. So again, it comes back to that community. So um, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots happening already, but there's, there's lots more to come with, with the hub. Yeah. And I think it's a, um, it's an interesting lesson too. I think if, for those of you listening that that maybe aren't as far down the content creation journey. And when I say that can be anything, right? That could be, you could be doing a LinkedIn newsletter, you could be writing a blog, you could be doing a newsletter for your clients. It can all be in the written form. There is something quite different about uh, sort of committing to some live content or close to live. I mean, this podcast is sort of an example of that where it's like anything can happen, you know. I mean, these two troublemakers here could just cover any topic and then yeah. we don't know where it's going to go. It's not that quite live. Really but- <laughs> exactly. But it's, it's um, you know, it, 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 it isn't truly live as we don't stream it live, but it's something that's quite fluid in that sense. And I think it's what the public are looking for. They really love to engage with that stuff. They're done with People editorial. Want- Right. Yeah, it's like it's one of the big things. I don't use TikTok. Like oh, I'm, I'm largely off social media on a, on a personal level, and I, you know, I've definitely missed the boat with TikTok. But one of the reasons that TikTok has risen to to such fame and success is it's because it is more real. People criticise Instagram because it was too polished, and yeah, I and there were just there were some. Uh, like, Leading to effects of Instagram, you know, everyone's having the best that ever, the you know, perfect moment, and and that that that's a misrepresentation, and, and it's right. very dangerous to young people. 
Uh, yeah, well, technology of young people, as I mentioned earlier, my daughter's three, and God, the world that she'll be in when she's 16, we can only imagine what it will be like in 30 years. Right. I, I am, and it's what and I share, like authenticity is, is so important. It's the number one thing I look for in any personal relationship, at any work that I do. And that's the same with, with online people want real, you know, where there's no problem whatsoever. If in a video or a live session, one of our creators messes up, gets something wrong, so what? We're yeah. humans. That is, yeah. that is just what people want, Peter. I think, I think you're spot on. We don't, they don't want polished anymore. And that's why anybody can be a creator. You don't yeah. need, you don't need a, a production set. You don't need a fancy, no. a fancy microphone. Just need the supercomputer that's in your yeah. pocket that does yeah. absolutely everything. Yeah, absolutely. And if you are talking to clients, you're already doing this. That's content. Like every every client meeting is content. Like so it, it is just confidence. Yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. uh, and it's it's having a crack, giving it a go. And as I say, we uh, yeah, we've uh, we've worked with a few already, and and noticed that it, never done it before, but been interested. And we've uh, we sort of nurtured them through. So. And I think we want more of that. Those that don't typically speak up and uh, they're fantastic at what they do, but they haven't necessarily uh, shared their voice so loudly so far, they're the people that the public should be hearing from more. Right. And I think, you know, our industry um, has a huge diversity challenge. And I mean that in all the ways that diversity applies, in every one of those categories, we have a massive problem. You only need to look at conference photos from right. the industry and you're like, yeah, okay, that's not something we're doing. <laughs> and I think and and the challenge with that is that the public needs to see themselves in us. You know, to that doesn't mean that they're only going to connect with like I'm only going to get you know redheads in their forties or fifties, right? So that's not how it works. But by giving them more choice, there's more opportunity that they'll be, be that person, that advisor, where they're like, "Oh, fantastic! You speak my language. You know, this is awesome." Um, and that connection yeah, is we, really we to, important. Yeah, we want to give it voice to you know all the great yes. advice out there in a trusted place. It's Again, I can't, I can't say it enough. There's far too many people out there who have a voice who really shouldn't. Yeah. You know, impacting impacting the public in any new way, taking advantage of selling them crap. And one of the visions for Fedino was really to bring the awesome stuff that our industry does, our profession does, bring it into the household of everyday Aussies, you know, there's so much value that we've got. There's so much knowledge. There's so much experience. Yeah, it's such an opportunity, right? Just to- it really is, and and in fact, I think is going to become this diversity issue is going to become more and more important because of the intergenerational wealth transfer, people's um, backgrounds and and their family history is going to become a, a bigger issue for advisors and, and our understanding of what their needs are because there can be some embedded sort of understanding or expectations that have to do with, I mean, so, you know, my husband's Greek and there's some – and it's not necessarily being Greek as much as his family and the way they are that and collect together and the cousins and, you know, all that connection has its expectations that will change how assets get transferred. We need more advisors from more backgrounds with more understanding of these issues so that then we can better connect and don't, you know, look aghast at something that a client says just because we don't come from that particular experience. Um, mm. So, yeah, oh, we need the, more. The, you're right. We need the ones that aren't loud mouths like me, like give me a microphone and I'm happy. Well, you know, we need more advisors out there to get get an opportunity um, to connect in their way, whatever that yeah. way is. You're a, you're a good egg, though, Pizza, so I'm <laughs> glad you've got a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a relief. That's a relief. <laughs> yeah, <do that. laughs> and I and I think as well, Ben, with that, where that um, call it cultural or whatever your background, right. is, you know, whether it's ethnic or whether it's you know socioeconomic or whatever, with like so many different di- different types of people, yeah, um, where that shows up, particularly is when we're connecting with people on the on product, non financial stuff, right? So yeah. when we're having these real life coaching conversations that we're having anyway. Yeah. The importance of that diversity and the importance of that uh, different, those different perspectives 
really shows through as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's the power of what we're hoping to do. I mean, uh, number one, give a voice to to advise the great people in the industry that to be heard by more Aussies, but also give them an opportunity to connect in a way that's not restricted by whether you've got a super animation bug that needs an investment or whether you've got, you know, let's bring it down Correct. to a real stuff that we care about as people. Correct. And yeah. I think, um, you know, I remember years back when life stages, you know, this concept of life stages even for super came up. And, and when it came up, I have to admit I struggled a bit um, and even more so now because, it's just not valid to so many people in so many ways. There's whole chunks of millennials and Gen Zs who either won't have or never want to have kids. Yet when you look at the diagram of the way somebody goes through life from a financial services perspective, you know, it's yeah. save, buy a house, get married, have kids. Like, look, like, hold on. There's a whole lot of things there that we're making that we're assuming people want to do or will do or can do. What if property is not on the, on the radar for a whole lot of people anymore, right? We've got to adjust and really be listening to what people are experiencing as consumers. We can't just serve this, this small and contracting um, portion of society. It's not good for us either, I don't think, you know? Right. Absolutely. So then- I want to sort of just clarify though one element that I think we have covered, but just for the listener. So the hub is this place of content and conversation and, and, you know, some live, some, you know, uh, sort of more passive content. But the exciting development that's sort of more recent is Connect, and that's where somebody can essentially buy a, a window of time with one of the experts. That's correct, yeah? So that then they can have that guiding conversation that is unique to their particular situation, but once again sort of stays well in that coaching coaching sort of uh, tone. Is that is that, Have I captured that correctly? Yeah, yeah, really well, yeah. For me to Connect, um, launching now is uh, the ability to book one-on-one appointment with a, a financial professional. Um, it is a conversation, uh, as Taborjan spoke about previously, we've worked with our uh, legal team uh, for months to ensure <laughs> that uh, the, the risk, the liability is absolutely minimised. Um, we, we guide our users, both seekers of financial guidance and those providing it with the do's and don'ts uh, of the platform. That's all... To be honest, like particularly financial professionals, they, they generally know it, but we reinforce that. Um, and uh, and it, they are just conversations that that the everyday Aussies can have about their financial situation, which our research and so much research out there has validated. It's what a lot of people want. They just yeah. want to have a conversation uh, just to to express their situation, uh, their their pain points, and uh, just to have a conversation with someone that they know they can trust and trust has come up in, in this uh, discussion with you a few times now mm-hmm. and it is just the most important thing to us. We we want uh, people to trust Benito um, and know that anybody that's on our platform um, is going to do the right thing by them and that's why every single uh, financial professional that does sign up to, to Benito if they're not hearing directly from Tavorjan and I we're, we're CCD and you're going to hear from Kimberly or one of our uh, future wonderful account managers we, we have a conversation with you and, and we, we help you to be on board and we make sure through that process as well that the right people are signing up to the platform and such is the way with, with uh, tech platforms like this 99%, probably 99.9% of the people that sign up are going to be great and they're yeah. going to have the right intentions. But there will be those uh, occasionally that, that we do need to filter out and that's that's what our system has in place. So, um, yeah, that's that's connects. Uh, that. So before we sort of wrap up, I am a bit keen to hear about, you know, what's on the radar going forward. So I'm assuming there's some – so. Um, Connect sort of live and that's that's you know launching that's exciting. What else is down you know down the path? And I'm also a bit curious about what's way down a bit blue sky about. Geez, wouldn't it be great if for you in terms of what Fernita could be doing or the way it could be engaging? Yeah. So just to be clear, uh, what is live right now? There's you know if you go to fernita.com.au, you can see a marketing website. But more importantly, you get it sign up and it's free to sign up. Anyone can sign up. Um, I know when I talk to 
the prospects that give our business a call and have a conversation with them. We're not a good fit and you're not ready for advice or, you know, for whatever reason, we're not a good fit. But if you want to get some initial help, um, so, you know, go check out Benito, sign up and you can get some, get, get whatever you need. Um, yeah. come back if you need to. So um, that's all, all, all already set. So people can sign up for free and they can access the content. Um, just watching now is going to be that connect where people can also book an appointment with a financial professional, have a conversation about the things that are on their mind to get not financial advice or a perspective in our language, <laughs> but to get help at all yeah. what advice, what, what consumers think of it as advice. Coming down the track um, is going to be enhancements to tools, calculators, resources that consumers could use to enable coaches to um, help people more. So they can say, look, let's have a conversation, go and check this out, go and check that out. And, you know, further down the track, um, you know, some of our big goals are to take this to, you know, outside of Australia and and help more people. Um, Ultimately as well to, you know, as we know as advisors, it's not just investments or finance stuff that touches personal finances, but, you know, lawyers have a part to play. Um, accountants have a part to play in really helping people make smart decisions with the money. Now, it's all connected with the stuff that we do, whether it's tax returns or whether it's understanding Absolutely. planning or admin relations or things like that. Um, so we think having a place where people can come to to get this help with personal finance in a broad sense um, is, is really critical. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I'm. Is there anything else we've missed? I think um, how should, if somebody is, if an advisor is is listening, or maybe even a practice manager is like, oh, one of my team, I think would be perfect for this. You know, what's the way? What do they need to do? What's the way for them to uh, connect with you guys? What would you like them to do? Yeah, they can uh, send us an inquiry through the, through the website. So as Tabor mentioned, finito dot com dot au. You can just send an inquiry there. Uh, you can contact us directly via hello at fedito.com.au and uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from you and um, explore whether you'd like to be on the platform part of our community. Fantastic. And I'll just to be clear, better the way that people, advisors may think about getting involved if you do. If you've already got content, mm. on another platform, you can, you can do that if you want. If you start creating content, you can do that. Secondly, if you want to start having conversations with people and get paid for your time, um, you can do that as well. Uh, so that's that's the that's the other way. Um, so yeah, please send us any questions, and um, I'll be at the FAAA conference. So I'm sure, a lot of our listeners will be as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, let me know if you're there. We'd love to catch you in Adelaide, uh, and then feel free to hit me up. We'd love to talk more about it. Uh, it is our Perfect. All right, advice explorers. Like the the gent said, if you'd like to find out more about Finito, then we're going to include all those details in the show notes, including both of their LinkedIn details so that you can stalk slash follow or connect with them as need be. And I'm sure they'll then point you in the right direction, depending on what your interest is. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us here today. And I'm really excited to see you know how Finito can just help more Australians, right? Let's just make them feel better about their money and, and more confident about their future. Absolutely. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for, thanks for doing what you do and, and the ensemble crew uh, in supporting advisors. It's such a great um, network that, you know, I'll be a part of and follow that, you know, since the beginning. So, you know, keep doing what you do on the testing. Will do. Thank you. So... I wonder if you, listener, are already an advisor um, who's one of the content creators on Finito. Are you uh, somebody who's already taking part in that? I'd love to hear um, how you found it, uh, you know, what made you consider joining, what what interested you, um, you know, what elements of that conversation do you agree or disagree with. Please share your insights on the Ensemble Community Platform I, as always, would love to hear your take uh, and even any tips for other advisors that might be thinking about it, you know, what, how they could look at their content management strategy, how they could start to look, because that's one of the challenges with, with all of this, I guess, and that's something I'd like to cover in terms of my thoughts is, you know, I, along with, with most of us, I think probably haven't had a strategic content management approach, right? We haven't had a structure and a way to get this stuff out so that it's relatively easy. And it was 
took a lot of self-reflection for me to realize, for example, things like this. If I can do audio or video a little bit on the fly with a bit of structure, of course, and you will have recognized with the episodes I've done to date where there is a structure to it, there's clearly some questions I generally ask, right? So it means, but what it means is because I've put that structure in place, I can let that conversation go. I can basically turn up with a little bit of historical digging on the guest and off we go, right? So, you know, I had to reflect on that and go, well, why was it? Is it so um, relatively easy to do these episodes for Ensemble? Well, it's because of that structure. It's because there's a deliverable, deliverable every week. I've got to make sure I get that episode out. Uh, if I'm going away, I know I get a few ahead of time, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, we probably, you know, taking part in something like this could be a good way to get yourself on that journey just generally, right? Not just for Finetta, but generally, you know, our content uh, strategy. Um, And as you go down that path, clearly, whether it's Finetta or not, we need to get clear about the difference between coaching and financial advice. Uh, And when I say financial advice, I mean, you know, legislated, legislated financial advice. You're really understanding that difference, you know, and realizing that coaching can encompass so much that can add so much value, tips, frameworks, bouncy balls, step-by-step things to consider, decision-making trees, case studies, you know, stories and analogies, translating things, just translating what's going on or what you're hearing or this article. Well, let's translate that because they're using a whole lot of jargon. You know, there's so many things we can do to help people through what they're facing that can be well before the very technical financial advice. And it can add immense value. And, you know, by participating in that, then we're also sort of clearing the path for them so that they find us a lot easier too, you know. So I guess I just wanted to share that that's sort of been my thinking on this is, all right, well, am I clearing the path? Am I making it easy for them to get to me? Or is there all of this rubbish in the way that they're going to have to deal with? And can I help with that? Is there some things that we can do? So, you know, we've taken a good hard look at who do we want to serve and what are they dealing with right now? I don't just mean financially, just generally, what are they dealing with? What can we bring to bear that can help? Um, And therefore, how can I help clear that path? Uh, So that's sort of, um, that's our approach. Uh, I'd be curious about what your approach to something uh, like this is and and your interest in a platform like Finito. But, you know, the more of these sort of ways that the public can connect with their money, hey, all of it's good, right? I'm a big believer that it's all great if it's making them ask questions, if it's making them dig into what they've got and better understand it. You know, this is a great, great thing. Now, As you know, it's that time again, folks. It's Curiosity Corner time. We're going to build that one skill we all need to become bionic advisors, avid curiosity. So to help you build that habit, the website I want you to take a look at this week is called Fathom. Now, this is an app or an add-on. You can find it at fathom.video. That's F-A-T-H-O-M dot video. And at first blush, when you look at it, it looks like it just sits in your um, video meeting tool and records and transcribes the whole meeting. And it's like, well, most of them do that for themselves too, right? So why would I need another app to add on to it? The thing is, Fathom does go sort of well beyond that. One of the features, for example, will auto request that um, recording consent for external attendees. So it'll just ask them, are you happy that this gets recorded and we use recording for blah, 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 right? So it'll just do that as a matter of course. One of the other interesting things that really caught my eye though is once Fathom is live through your meeting that you're holding, your video meeting, then it's live, it's sort of transcribing things as it goes and it's recording and transcribing. But also you can get it to uh, attach highlights or tags effectively to sections of the conversation. So maybe there's a section where somebody's talking all about financial details or all about, so it can be all sorts of things that they're, or it's a great feedback or testimonial, oh, we love dealing with you because then you can click on the highlight button and the tool 
tags actually not just tags that bit when you when you click it sort of looks back to the whole audio clip for when that person's talking and c- you captures that little clip and until you say you know end highlight and then it's it grabs that as its own little clip so not only is it then tagged in the transcription and in the video so that somebody can easily sort of see a summary down the right of the key highlights but you could just share that highlight so with somebody you can share that highlight via a link in a file note, or you can share it to a member of the team and say, hey, they just said this. Can you go away and deal with that, please? So these grabs or audio clips you can share um, individually, or they can just make up your file notes. So instead of your notes um, sort of needing to, you know, this transcription that's everything, um, it could be uh, the highlights that are the notes, um, and maybe there's a transcription attached or something like that. So it's an interesting thought to think about the way to be able to do this live so that your file notes of a conversation are done when you click end call, right? So really get to the point where that part of that administrative part is done. Now, maybe there's some action items. Well, it's also got an action item tag there that if that comes up during the call, fantastic. What we'll do is we're going to send you blah, 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 blah. Then as you say that, you could click the action item button in Fathom and it'll make sure it grabs that as an action item with a little box that you can tick off. So look, it's a clever, really clever concept that I think could let us get far more effective with the way meetings work. Now, it's always a given. We've got to check security on these things. They had to jump through some pretty significant security hoops for partners like Salesforce, Zoom and others. Um, But check it out for yourselves. Get your dealer group to check it out. All these things are important. Um, But I think it's well worth a look, Uh, particularly if you use video notes a fair bit. This could mean that your head goes down far less when you're holding a video meeting as you're writing notes. You could be really just clap, capturing those snippets um, and having something really cohesive. And imagine being able to send highlights to, you know, a power planner even so that it draws attention to the key bits and they don't necessarily have to listen to the whole meeting, 90-minute meeting. So I just think, you know, with some application, clearly some practice, this is going to require some some practice to get it done. What I loved though is when you join and you sort of, it, it actually gives you a test run and it it has the, a guy talking and it's showing you how you can click highlight, how that works, what happens, what it summarizes. So you're really going to see how the tool works pretty quickly, right? They've really tried to make it such that you can get from zero to hero pretty quickly. So I'd encourage you to check out fathom.video. I also want to call out the fact that this was brought to my attention by the wonderful uh, Michael Back. So thank you, sir. Um, great great suggestion and I'd love to know what any of you think and how you found it. Welp, that's all we've got for this week, folks. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice, tech fix, or to magically sent to you each Friday. And look, if you're seeing the run down to the end of the year and you feel like you're getting a bit bit stuck in a rut, maybe on process or tech projects, and you feel like you need to just take a step back, you know, block out a day um, for some planning and readiness for 2024, then, you know, I would really love to facilitate a brainstorming session for your team. We could draw out the next best projects for the business. We could talk through what tech might assist with that and even get them innovating within the practice. Um, I'm already getting bookings for late October and November. And in fact, I'm already in various interstate locations during that time. So really, no matter where your location, if you're a bit curious about that, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. That's forward slash Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. And we can certainly have a chat about what you're looking for. Otherwise, I will most certainly look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, Advice Explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 